Nearly 10 years after the Z lymphotropic virus's first diagnosed case in the U.S., the tides are finally beginning to turn. The disease responsible for some 2.4 million deaths finally has a cure. Today I am joined by Dr. Peter Korskoff and Dr. Kurt Carmichael, both experts in the Z lymphotropic virus. Dr. Korskoff, your company Ziegler Anderson has developed the new drug Aspartol, and just in the six months since its release, we have seen the infection rate go from over 30% to less than 1%. How did your company go about finding this cure? I would be careful about calling it a cure. Uh, a cure implies that you beat the virus. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Korskoff, but your drug simply shields the virus, making it non-contagious. But for the some 30 million people who already have the disease, it does nothing to alleviate the symptoms or the impending I, I death. believe you're wrong in not calling this a cure. This is a breakthrough that has already resulted in the saving of millions of lives and will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. Well, I'm not saying this isn't a great development. I'm just saying it's not a cure. Well, Dr. Carmichael, do you have a cure? Yeah, I do. The results are coming in this evening. We are very confident that we have found the cure. I got a good feeling about these results. Uh, delivery for Dr. Kurt Carmichael? That's me. Okay, can you uh, send this for me? Three percent. Eight years of hard work and nothing to show for it. We do too have something to show for it. Three percent. It's not much. It's definitely not what we hoped for, but it's a start. Three percent is nothing. Three percent is an accident. You don't get it. I just went on national television and told every mother and father Every brother, every sister, every friend, every little girl, that her daddy was going to be okay. <laughs> and it was a lie. This isn't about you. This isn't about your ego. This is about helping the people who are depending on us. <laughs> you think this is about me? You think I gave up a six-figure salary, my own office, a big fat Christmas bonus at Ziegler Anderson, so I can stay up until 2 a.m. in some crap lab every single night just to get my name on some shiny plaque on a wall collecting dust? Then why aren't you figuring this out? Because I'm done figuring things out! I'm done failing! I'm done looking for a cure to an incurable disease! I'm done!
Hi there. Hey. What brings you here? Uh, nothing. I, uh, I'm just having a rough night. How so, Mr. Uh... Carmichael? Doctor... Just Kurt. Well, Kurt, what's bothering you tonight? It's a long story. <laughs> I'm not sure well, you I have heard. plenty of time. I was in India, helping with the flu epidemic when the virus hit. I was young and fresh out of college and thought I knew everything. But I mean, there was nothing I could do. I'll never forget the look on their faces. So I came back to the States, assembled a team, and we were gonna beat this thing. But I mean, we had no idea what we were up against. I mean, we were fighting blind. I mean, we didn't even know what this thing was. About, I don't know, six months into the research, we finally get a breakthrough. You know, we, we identified the active strain that causes all the problems, and we published it in a journal of science. We won a few awards, attended a few banquets. And then about three months later, Ziegler Anderson came out with The Cure. And just like that, everyone forgot about us. All that grant money we were promised. So here we are, running out of money, running out of time. I mean, we have a cure that works on paper and lab rats, but that's- have a cure? No. No. We got the results back from our clinical trials and it works on a whopping 3% of cases. 3%? Yeah. Looks like we're done. I mean, it's over. You know, I love music. It can really speak to the soul when, when words are just too harsh. Sometimes it's playful or, or happy or sad or spontaneous and unpredictable. Take this for instance, your common 251 cadence. get to this chord, uh, there's a certain tension. Well, it needs to be resolved. We know where it's going. We can sing it in our heads. Well, it's, it's going to the final chord, and that'll be the end. Well, we've heard it a thousand times before, but this one time, it goes somewhere unexpected. Virus, don't you? 3% may not seem like a lot to you, but to someone who clings to the smallest chance of hope, it can mean the world. You can't give up now, Dr. Kurt. Adam! Adam, I, I need you and Valerie at the lab ASAP. Let's figure some stuff out. These results, they're different. We can't find out why, but there seems to be no common reason for its effectiveness. We've looked at all the areas we knew could be problematic and there's nothing. What about genetics? Genetic immunability only accounts for about 1%. It's just too inconclusive. I remember I was in grad school when I heard this story about a farmer who had a bad case of blight. All the farmers around him just burned their crops and left the healthy ones. But this farmer was desperate, so he used a highly touted but untested chemical to stop the blight. And it did. After a week, the crops were completely cured, but after two weeks, they were all dead. The chemical, it turns out, was shielding the crops from any foreign substances, including the water the crops needed to survive. We keep looking where we've looked a thousand times before. But what if the answer is something unexpected? Valerie, the report about aspartol. What did it say again? That aspartol creates a shield around the infected cells. What kind of shield? You think it's aspartol? Valerie, out of our 3%, who is not on aspartol? 
patient 34, 67, 207, 294, 301, every single one of them. And there's our 3%. So, how do we convince everyone that Ziegler Anderson is wrong? Never give up. <laughs>